Okay, so in this exercise now, we're going to be looking at a slightly different uh, experimental design. So we're still working with uh, two populations, uh, but in this case, this uh, problem has been set up as one that is often called a matched sample design, uh, or sometimes it'll be called a paired sample or something like this. Uh, and, and basically, all this is is a different method of collecting your data. So in the previous exercises that we've done when we're looking at uh, uh, two populations and we have two samples, in those cases we have had uh, two completely independent samples that were taken. So we had five observations here and five observations here. We calculate their samples, uh, their, their means, and we test for a difference in those means. In a match sample, what's different is we have uh, common observational unit. So in this case, I'm looking at test scores uh, of the same student uh, at different periods of time. So rather than collecting one sample of students and looking at their average grade and then another sample of students and looking at their average grade, here I'm tracking those same students over time. So let me, we'll go into the exercise here and I'll, I'll explain a little bit more what I mean by that. So here in, in Canada is a bilingual country, so there's benefits to speaking uh, both official languages. This is especially true in our public service. So in order to promote bilingualism, public servants have an opportunity to take courses in their second language at no cost. As a taxpayer-funded training program, it's important to verify that this is effective. In order to do this, students are given an entry exam when they begin the language training and an exit exam when they are finished. The difference between their grades are used to determine uh, if they've improved. So well, another way that we could have designed this experiment is if, if this is the entry, so we could take, you know, let's say 10 students and calculate the, have these 10 students write the entry exam and calculate their average grade uh, as they go into this training program. And then, maybe even that same day, or the next day or something, calculate the average grade of another group of students who have just finished this program, and calculate their mean. So these students would be different than these students. Both are, have, gone, or have gone through or are going through the same training program. But this group of students, uh, they're not the same as this group of students. There are innate differences in those individual experimental units, those things that we are, we are measuring. So in the match sample design, we eliminate that source of variation that comes into the data set as a result of differences in uh, our experimental units or those things that we're observing. And so I have, now I have just six students and I'm tracking exactly those students. So with each experimental unit, I now get two data points. I have that person's entrance grade, that person's exit grade. Now what we do with our test is instead of calculating whether or not there's a difference in means greater than whatever kind of test we're doing, now we're testing the mean difference. So it's the difference between a difference in means and a mean difference. Very subtle difference in the, in the terminology and the wording. So how do we go about doing this? Well, let's set up our test. So here we want to determine if there's been an improvement in, in grades. So my null and my alternative, I want to set this up to show an improvement. So the notation I'm going to use here is mu d, because I'm looking at a mean difference. Now, the difference values have already been calculated, and so this is exit minus entrance. So this is 34 minus 25, and this is 52 minus uh, 45, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we calculate the individual difference values, and that now, we calculate that mean and difference, that becomes our sample statistic that we use for the test. Now, the way that this has been collected, this is exit minus entrance, this is going to be an upper tail test because I want those values, I want that mean value to be a positive number. Exit, the exit exam score, I want that to be on average higher than the entrance exam score. So this difference, I want this mean difference then to be greater than zero to show that there has been an improvement. Uh, we'll do this test at the 05 level of significance. Okay. 
So there we've got our, our test is formulated. We formulated this way again because mu d is calculated as exit minus entrance. If we fail to reject the null hypothesis, then that means that no improvement has been made. Uh, if we do reject the null hypothesis, then that shows that there is a positive uh, difference uh, for these students. I don't know if you can hear that funny squeaking sound, just if you're wondering what it is. It is the dog over here chewing on her teddy bear that's got a little squeaky inside of it. I'm sure she's trying to dissect it and get the squeaky out. I think that's her mission. Okay, so carry on. So we have our test, uh, we need our test statistics. So this basically now is going to look exactly like a single sample test. Uh, we're using sample data. So this is going to be the mean difference minus whatever I hypothesize that mean difference to be. I'll denote it D naught. This is a hypothesized mean difference divided by S over the square root of N. So it looks very similar to a single sample. Uh, test. So we need to calculate a few things and a few intermediate things. We need the uh, sample mean and we'll also have to calculate S, the sample standard deviation. That can be a little bit tedious. Thankfully we have a relatively small sample size to work with. So I'm going to get out my calculator and here I'll calculate the mean difference. So 9 plus 7 minus 1 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6. Divide that by, I have 6 observations, so that's a mean difference of just 5. Okay, and then we need that to calculate our standard deviation as well. I'm just going to scroll down here a little bit. That standard deviation, the formula that we need is this one. Difference between individual observations. I'm going to change the notation a little bit because I'm looking at individual difference values. So I'll use D and D bar squared divided by n minus 1, and here we are adding across all of those observations. So what this becomes, this will be a little bit of a long calculation, this is going to be 9 minus 5, so that's that first observation, minus this average that we calculated, squared, plus 7 minus 5 squared, plus minus 1 minus 5 squared, plus 4 minus 5 squared, plus 5 minus 5 squared, am I running out of room there, plus 6 minus 5 squared. Okay, good, we've got all that. So, and then we'll have to take the square root of all of that, and this is all divided by n minus 1, n here is equal to, I have 6 observations, so 6 minus 1. Okay, so let's go through, we can probably avoid using a calculator here. 9 minus 5 is 4, 4 squared is 16, plus 7 minus 5 is 2, 2 squared is 4, minus 1 minus 5 is minus 6, 6 squared is 36, uh, 1, 0, and 1. So there's everything inside. We divide this by 5 and square root everything. So let's get a calculator here. So 16, let me clear everything here. 16 plus 4 plus 36 plus 1. Uh, that should be a plus 1 out here too. Not a minus 1. So plus 1 plus 1 equals and then I'm going to divide that by 5 equals and square root. So I have a standard deviation here of 3.4. Okay, so I'll come back up here and this is 3.4. Okay, now we've got all of the ingredients to calculate our test statistic. So this uh, average difference was 5. Our hypothesized difference is 0 divided by 3.4 over the square root of 6. And so what is that going to be? 5 divided by 3.4 over 6 square root that, close that bracket, equals 3.6. 3.6, so there's our test statistic. 
Now we want to go to our t tables and find the relevant uh, probability. We'll obtain a p value for this. We're done here, part b. I've got my test statistic of 3, 6. Now we want to use our p value approach. So I'm going to go to the t distribution. How many degrees of freedom? Degrees of freedom, n minus 1. So this is 5 degrees of freedom. So my t distribution is messy from another problem. Here I want 5 degrees of freedom. My test statistic was 3.6. Ignore this. This is a mess from another problem. 3.6. Come around. It's right somewhere in between here. So my probability, which this is a one-tail test, so this probability is going to be our p-value. So my p-value, I'm something less than 0 0.01, something greater than 0 0.005. So let's go back to here. No, this one, my mistake. So my p-value, less than 0 0.01, greater than 0 0.005. Can we draw a conclusion from that? Yes, we can. Our alpha, our level of significance was 0.05. And here I know that my p-value is less than 0.01. So the same rejection rule, p-value is less than alpha. I can reject this null hypothesis. And my evidence does support the alternative hypotheses. My evidence shows that, yes, there appears to be uh, gains here. These students are they're improving their performance. Um, between the entrance exam and the exit exam. Okay, so there, I've kind of skipped to E. That was our interpretation. Let's uh, just quickly look up our critical value here, again, just for practice. So this is alpha 05, and we are going to be looking at a 6 degrees of freedom T distribution. So 6, sorry, 5 degrees of freedom n minus 1, that was 5 degrees of freedom, and alpha is 0.5, so our critical value here is 2.015. So our critical value, T alpha, 6 degrees of freedom, is 2.0, what did I say, 2.015, okay? And so once again with a test statistic, here this test statistic was 3.6, that's well beyond that critical value. So that confirms our conclusions, we comfortably reject that null hypothesis. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, the match sample design, you know, as you can see the process is absolutely the same. The calculations are the same as if this were a single population uh, test our test statistic, our standard deviation, all these things are calculated in the same way as if it were a single population test. The real difference here is simply how the data is gathered. And so often the challenge for students in this type of exercise, one, is really just recognizing what type of problem is it and knowing what type of hypotheses goes with that problem, the notation, etc. Um, and then the rest is just the same kinds of tedious calculations um, that are part of so many of the problems that we do. So the real challenge here is just recognizing the kind of problem that it is and then what, uh, what formulas and what process to follow. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.